and um, there were quite a few of them. And since they had been underwater for 80 years, so years or something, they were relatively well preserved. And they built a new pavilion out at Wendell. Mm -hmm. um, if you have the chance to go out to Wendell, that's one of the most beautiful dams that I've ever seen. Spillway that was built by the seas. Um, probably in Uh, recreation was an important part of the camp experience. The boys participated in sports. <laughs> and there are a couple more. Here's one of uh, Otter River State mm -hmm. Forest. The, the guy over here, look at the guy over here. I think this is the guy in the boxing picture. <laughs> and they also played music. young men with basic needs. The average enrollee gained 12 pounds during their first six months in the camp. Remember, for many of these young men, the seas may have offered them the first regular meals they had had in quite some time. Food was basic, but there was plenty of it. Here's a picture from Harold Hunter. It's hard to even tell, I'm sure that must have been in, in Lorraine campground, October Mountain. Another part of the relief function of the seas was to provide enrollees with skills and knowledge that would better prepare them to find jobs. Each camp had an educational director, offered, often an unemployed teacher, who organ, organized the learning uh, opportunities. Vocational classes were offered, including horticulture, drafting, that's okay, Photography, radio skills, mechanics, cooking and baking. <laughs> and there were academic classes as well. Many of the men left school early to go to work to help their families. When they missed out on what they missed out on in school was made up for it in CCC classes. And they said, we can take it. <laughs> At the end of the day, enrollees, what did we do? Where did we go? Well, Skip ahead. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, enrollees were guaranteed work, a chance to learn, meals, and a safe place to call home. The Civilian Conservation Corps, after nine years of service to the land and people of the United States, closed <coughs> its final camp with an unceremonious, I think something got messed up there. That was two slides ago. That was two slides ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go back, go okay. back. Oh, I got Cut this part out of the TV program. <laughs> Edit. Closing the last camp. There we go. Yeah, we found it. The Civilian Conservation Corps, after nine years of service to the land and people of the United States, closed its final camp with an unceremonious non-renewal of legislation. At the end of its life, despite opening enrollment to a broader age range, it was having trouble filling the camp. The economy was improving and young men were finding jobs, which was one of the original purposes of the CCC. At the same time, America was ramping up for war in Europe and the Pacific, so the funding and materials that supported the CCC was required elsewhere. When all was said and done, the impacts of the CCC had on was remarkable on the land of the people of Massachusetts and the nation. In Massachusetts, 100,000 men in 68 camps, 20 campground and dangerous areas, 79 lakes and ponds, 10 ski areas, 
792 miles of truck trails and roads, and 291 miles of foot trails. 53 miles of horse trails. It's amazing, huh? Um, and the legacy of the CCC in uh, Moore in Massachusetts, they planted 12,000 acres, millions of trees, 50,000 acres of forest land improvements, insect pest control, plant disease control, forest fighting, <coughs> fire prevention, and emergency work. Across the nation, over 3 million men enrolled, 5% of the total U.S. population. It's incredible. 1 in 25 men. $2 billion estimated value of work. And I wonder, oh, that's $21 billion in 2002. Really very impressive. In our forests and parks, this is what one of the seas road. And these, I don't know if anybody recognizes it, these are red pines. Those are the ones that are very straight and tall with very little branching on the side. Those were all planted by the CCC in the 30s. Miles Standish State Forest, which is one of our, our bigger parks. The Elliott Tower and the Blue Hills Reservation. This is the building at Mohawk State Forest. It, it's right near the headquarters. It's absolutely stunning, this building. I was just in there last Wednesday or something. One of the dams at Savoy. There's a berry pond also in Pittsfield State Forest, as well as Harold Parker State Forest. <clears throat> and winter. And impacts on the people. The effect in the community was equally as great as on the land. $25, what it would do for a family. And today those impacts are carried forward by the alumni and all of those whom they have touched. And it's just, I mean, it's inevitable that every year we use, lose more and more of them. These men are in their late 80s. Um, they're absolutely delightful to talk to. They always say that the CCCs were some of the best times of their lives. I mean, it was really hard work but they really enjoyed it very much. More than 75 years after the Civilian Conservation Corps began, the lingering effects of the boys' work is clear. Before the final shovel fell in 1942, the record of the CCC was entered and the legacy of the seas was set. Across Massachusetts and across the nation, both the land and the people would be forever changed. Now, 75 years later, the CCC boys have passed both the land and their skills and values onto us, their children, and grandchildren. And it is our responsibility to carry it onward. We think we can take it, too. <laughs> There's a very, very well uh, organized, very motivated and hardworking friends group at Upton State Forest. And they have one of the CCC buildings and some infrastructure as well. Upton is one of our forests that has no staff anymore. And um, it's been that way for quite some time. It's a satellite of Hopkinton State Park. It's down in that same area. If you take 495, one exit below the Mass Pipe, and then sort of go right from there and um, a left on Westwood Road. Um, there's a park up in there called Upton State Forest. Quite a few of the remaining CCC alumni come there. They do a flag raising ceremony and we've got some tools that they used to use, a crosscut saw, and we bring the, the Student Conservation Association, which is kind of, you know, they passed the torch to them last year um, in the 75th uh, year or anniversary of the formation of the CCC, the Student Conservation Association is kind of 
taken over, you know, the, the legacy of the seas. Are there any questions? I don't know if I can answer. Can you talk a little bit about the Friends of Harold Parker? Sure. Uh, it, it started in August of last year. Um, we're still a very, very new Lee forming group. We do have officers. Um, have not yet attained status as a 501c3, but we're going, and I shouldn't say we, because as an employee, I can't be part of that group. Bob is actually a member in the off season. Um, and there have been up to 20, 25 people of multiple interests, which is really kind of exciting, that are coming to the meetings. Um, we have hikers and bikers and horse people and abutters. Um, we're looking hunters. for more and more, just the more people that should go in here. Our next meeting is next Wednesday, the 14th. That we meet at REI at 7 o'clock um, mm -hmm. in their community room over in Reading. So they have this wonderful community <coughs> that, that they use for let groups utilize for meeting space. And we think it's a good it's a good partnership with REI because the people who Patronize REI um, are the people that you know would be patronizing Harold Parker as well. Mm -hmm. So you know it's good that, that we kind of keep that relationship uh, going. You know, mm -hmm. uh, REI has been good to Harold Parker in the past, and, and, uh, so I think it's a good, it's a good place to hold the meeting. It's appropriate, I think. Uh, so you know she's still you know well welcome to attend. <laughs> it's it's still new. And, you know, we're just trying to get the thing going and get some enthusiastic people and, and maybe just, you know, to try to, you know, just bring more interest in Harold Parker and, and preserve what's there. And, and uh, it's just a good thing. Walt is there a lot. He comes to every on the gym. Uh, it's just a good, good like-minded, like yourselves, you know, that type of people that, that go. And, uh, you're all welcome. April 24th. Um, is Park Serve Day across this state. Um, we are going to meet for a cleanup at Harold Parker from 10 to 12. Very quick. It's not going to be painful or anything. Are we meeting at the pavilion? Oh, you are. I'm in a mountain bike race. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm not going to be there that day. Yeah. I do like Park Serve Day. Great time to get out and, and uh, you know help pick up the product and stuff. And, you know, just to, just to socialize too at the same time. But you know, you see you see what's out there, what people are throwing, you know, the trash and stuff. It's kind of sad, but uh, but uh, it just brings the attention to to that product, you know, literally in the forest. And, and we're providing all the materials, the yeah. bags, pick sticks, gloves, granola boxes. <laughs> <laughs> So and again, it's a, it's, a, it's a good chance to meet other people that are interested in the park as well as yourself. It's an 8 to 10, right? 10, 10, 10, 10 to 12. Well. Speaking of cleaning up, does Harold Parker allow people in to take wood for a roof for any for fire, firewood? Used to no. uh, you have to get a permit for that. Yeah. You can't just go in and take wood. Where do you get a permit? I did have to talk to Steve Data, the superintendent, okay. and he can point you in the right direction. Oh, but it is they have a program. The state has a program, I think. I'm not really familiar with it, but uh, they do have a program for that, I think. Yeah, they used to do that years uh, well, back in the 70s. Yeah, they, yeah. They, uh, I think they still line up to do this. So many people are there. They, 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 they still do it. It's the they still do it with the program. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 They run it a bit differently than they used to. I think that there were there was some injury that may have resulted from people felling trees and stuff. I, I don't know how they... They used to mark the trees. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 